Your brain is responsible for everything you do, from tying your shoes and brushing your teeth in the morning to thinking about the most complex, nuanced issues you possibly can. It's all thanks to your brain. But how does your brain work? Now, that's obviously a complex question that will have multiple answers. But like any big complex system, you have to understand something about the smallest functional units that compose it if you're going to understand how the whole system works. Now, in the case of the brain and all other living material, the smallest functional units are cells. In the brain, there is a specific type of cell called a neuron. In this video, we are going to be describing this most important type of brain cell and the different types of them and we're going to walk away with some practical advice about why it's so important to protect your brain. It comes down to the biology of how these cells work. Now, this video is a little bit more in depth than a couple other videos on this channel about neurons. This is geared toward anybody who wants a little bit deeper dive into what neurons are and why they're significant. If you want a little bit less technical and uh, something that's just a little bit easier to digest, check out this other video on how neurons work. And if you want something even quicker, we've got a 30 second summary of what a neuron is and why it is important to your brain. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, before we dive into neurons a little bit more, just do a quick introduction. I'm Andrew Cooper Sansone, and this channel is called Sense of Mind. We are all about helping you to understand your brain so that you can upgrade your mind and improve your life. Now, this current video that you're watching is part of an ongoing series that will basically serve as an introduction to neuroscience. You'll be able to dive in at whatever level of detail you want to and if you want further resources and reading, we'll provide those in the description. So in the case of this video, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about neurons. These are the primary type of cell in the brain. So if you don't want to go into too much detail, maybe check out those other videos like I just mentioned. So why are we talking about neurons? Well, neurons are the most important cell type in the brain because they allow for the electrochemical communication that occurs across the brain that allows you to do everything from thinking and feeling to acting in the world. In this and future videos, we'll go deeper into how neurons communicate and something called the action potential, which actually allows neurons to fire, allows them to send a message to another neuron. But in this video, we're going to be getting down to the basics. What are neurons? What are the different types? And how do they allow you to sense, think, and act in the world? Okay, so this is an artistic rendition of a neuron. As you can see, it has a central area and then all these tentacle-like arms projecting out to other neurons in its vicinity. So when it comes to what they're made of, neurons are just like all other cells in the body. They're basically a fluid-filled bag. Um, and the outside of the bag, the actual material that the outside is made of, is called the cell membrane. And the fluid inside is called the cytoplasm. Now, what's interesting about neurons is that they're able to generate something that I mentioned earlier called an action potential. Don't worry about what that is right now, but it's basically just electricity that that neuron can send to other neurons in its network. So as you see in this image, this neuron is connected to a number of other neurons and it is actively sending and receiving signals from those neurons. So those tentacle-like projections that are emanating from the cell body, the central area of that neuron, are called dendrites and axons. Dendrites are the projections that a neuron uses to listen or receive signals from other cells. Whereas the axon, and there's typically only one of those on a neuron, um, is able to send a signal to another neuron. So in general, neurons do a lot of listening and a little bit of talking. But enough about the cell biology. We'll cover that a little bit more in future videos. For now, we can think of the 
functionality of a neuron as basically like a tiny, simple computer. Now that may seem kind of weird, but just remember the fact that a neuron can receive electrical signals from other neurons and send them to still other neurons. So it's like a computer in that it can take an input, process it, and then send some sort of output. That's the basics of what a neuron does. Okay, so now let's see a little bit more about how that plays out in your body and brain by talking about the three main types of neurons. So first are the sensory neurons. Sensory neurons are basically neurons that receive input from the sensory organs like your eyes, your ears, uh, your skin, your um, nose and mouth. And it receives those signals and then sends them to the brain where eventually you form a perception of whatever it is. So if it's coming from the eyes, maybe you're looking at, for example, a dog. And when you look at that dog, the light enters into your eye and then that transmits a signal to your brain via those sensory neurons and then your brain forms an image of the dog. All right, next up are the motor neurons. So if sensory neurons are all about taking in information, motor neurons are all about doing things in the world or doing things inside the body. So motor neurons basically take a signal from the brain that says, hey, I want to, for example, wave my hand. And it will take that signal and send it to neurons in the spinal cord that will then send that signal to neurons and to the muscles in your arm that will then tell them to move in a specific way. So another example is if you are, again, looking at that dog that we just mentioned and say the dog moves and you need to keep tracking it with your eyes so that you can keep looking at that cute dog. Now, the way that you do that is that your brain uh, notices that the dog moved and then um, motor neurons tell your eye to move in a certain way so as to keep tracking that dog. Okay, so let's just take a quick break and talk about some practical advice that you can walk away with already. So the thing that I think is most important to learn about neurons is that you need to protect them. You need to protect your brain. The reason is that neurons, unlike most other cells in the body, do not replicate. So when you get a cut on your arm or your hand or an injury really on most any organ in your body, including your bones, uh, part of the healing process is that those cells that make up that tissue are actually replicating and multiplying themselves and they eventually fill that gap. And so that's why you, know, you don't just have open wounds from years and years ago. They fill up pretty quickly with cells. Now there's some other stuff going on there, but that's the basic answer. And the thing about neurons, uh, the reason that they don't replicate is that if you think about your brain and your nervous system as a giant wiring diagram, a really complicated wiring diagram, um, while you can shift a connection here or there and, and change it a little bit um, on kind of the micro scale, if you start replicating those wires, uh, the neurons being the wires, if you start just willy-nilly replicating those throughout the nervous system, the problem is that that's really going to mess up the wiring diagram. And if we go back to that picture of the neuron that we had earlier, the problem is that it has very specific connections to these other neurons. And if it just replicated itself, what would that new neuron do? Would it shove the old neuron out of the way? Would it mess up those connections in some other way? Well, that's probably what would happen. And that's likely why neurons do not replicate. They don't want to mess up that wiring diagram. So that's kind of a trade-off because now, while you have this very beautiful wiring diagram that allows you to see and think and feel and have the personality that you do, um, your nervous system loses much of its ability to heal itself. So that's why when someone gets a spinal cord injury or a brain injury, it's really permanent. It's often permanent. Not always, but, but it's really often the case that someone who gets for example, a spinal cord injury that paralyzes them from the waist down, they're likely to not come back from that. 
Now, there are some technologies in development that may help with those sorts of injuries and may even help neurons to regenerate some of their axons so that they can continue to send signals. But for now, it's extremely important to protect your brain and protect your nervous system generally because it's very hard to regenerate cells in the nervous system. And, you know, for example, if you get a head injury, if you're riding your bike and you're not wearing a helmet and you smash your head into the ground, you might uh, damage your brain. And depending on where on your brain you actually damage it, uh, you could lose the function associated with that area. So different areas of the brain are responsible for doing different things. Like uh, I mentioned earlier, there's some that are uh, responsible for planning and executing actions in the world and allowing you to move and wave your hand. And if you damage those neurons, uh, it might be that you're unable to move your arm anymore or feel your hand, or you're unable to you know, perceive color or um, speak or read or calculate the answer to an equation, or it might even change your personality. So it's really important to wear a helmet and to always protect your brain, keep your brain healthy, and you should be pretty much good in life. Now, we'll talk in a future video about something called neuroplasticity. And this is the process of neurons changing their connections and brain regions shifting. And um, it's a very interesting topic and it actually allows the brain to have a little more flexibility than I've been letting on. But um, in general, it's not perfect. And if you have big enough damage, widespread enough damage in the brain, neuroplasticity is unlikely to make a huge difference. Okay, so the third type of neuron, the final type, is called an interneuron. Now, an interneuron is often situated between sensory and motor neurons, between the sensory systems and the motor systems, because it's, it's responsible, or these networks of interneurons are responsible for kind of coordinating activity between, you know, movement and sensing. So as we mentioned, like, for example, with the... Um, with, when you're watching a dog, right? You're looking at that dog and the dog moves. Well, your visual system may notice, okay, now the dog's in a different position. Um, your sensory neurons uh, take note of that, but how do they talk to your motor neurons so that your motor neurons can tell your uh, muscles in your eyeball to move in a certain way so as to keep tracking that dog? Well, they have kind of um, these other neurons that are between them called interneurons that are able to coordinate that activity. Now, interneurons are not just responsible for coordinating the activity between motor and um, sensory systems. They're really abundant throughout the brain and they kind of provide uh, regulation of neural networks. They're, they're often like the middleman and um, they provide much of the computational flexibility of the brain. Now that's a term that we'll, we'll definitely talk about in future videos, but basically it means that it's, they provide much of the ability that your brain has to think in, in flexible ways and to not be this sort of uh, robotic um, automaton. They, they, uh, they allow for a lot of talking back and forth and bringing in different systems. They connect different networks. They are just really important types of neurons. Okay, so you can see that our kind of diagram or our model of how uh, the sensory and motor neurons uh, interact through the interneurons is really simple. And as you might guess, it's not just three neurons that are involved. It's many, 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 many more neurons than that. Uh, but you can imagine that building up the complexity of that kind of circuit would allow you to do all kinds of things like catch a ball flying through the air or um, you know, move in a certain way that uh, allows you to change your vantage point and to dance and to sing and to do all the amazing things that humans do with our bodies uh, that require us to you know, be aware of our surroundings and what we're doing in the world. And again, we've only covered the visual system and you know neurons in your eyeball. Um, so there's a whole 
panoply of, of different systems that work together to allow you to do everything you do in the world, but it all comes down to neurons talking back and forth to each other. Now, one amazing fact about the brain is that it contains about 86 billion neurons. That is a huge number. Now, the even more amazing fact is that neurons may not even be the most abundant cell type in the brain. There is another very important type of cell called a glial cell, and we'll talk more about those in a future video, but their responsibility is basically to support neurons and to keep the brain healthy. Now, they are a little more complicated than that, and they uh, if you didn't have glial cells, well, your brain really wouldn't work. But um, we'll hold off on talking about them for now because neurons really are the major players in the brain. All right, so that concludes um, a basic outline of what a neuron is and the three different types of neurons. Now, you can probably tell how extremely simple our uh, examples are, but they do give you a sense of how the brain works, at least um, kind of in broad strokes. Now, um, it, I bet you're wondering how exactly do neurons actually transmit information between each other? Um, we've just been talking in generalities about the fact that they use electrical signals, but how does a fluid-filled bag, a cell, produce electricity? Well, we're going to talk about that in the next video when we talk about action potentials, the way that a neuron generates electricity and the way that it allows it to communicate with other neurons. So stick around for that. And as I mentioned, all of these videos are going to have three levels of difficulty. We'll have a 30 second rundown, which is super simple. We'll have a short um, explanation video that will you know, give you the basics and won't go into too much technical detail. And we'll have a longer video like this, which will dive a little bit deeper into everything if you want a little more detail. And as I mentioned, uh, we'll also provide extra readings at the end um, and in the description of every video. So if you're interested in going deeper into um, what a neuron is and how it works, um, I urge you to check out the recommended readings in the description hit the red subscribe button so that you never miss anything new from Sense of Mind and make sure you hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you're notified whenever new videos come out. Also, please be sure to follow Sense of Mind on Instagram and Facebook and sign up for the newsletter. That will be getting going soon and all the links to those can be found both in the description below this video as well as on our channel's homepage. So definitely check that out. I'm really happy that you're here. Thanks for watching. By the way, this channel is brought to you by the Diamond Mind Foundation. And this video was written and produced by me, Andrew Cooper Sansone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.